an article that really resonated and also hit some nerves for folks. It's called Violence Against Asian Americans and Why Hate Crime Should Be Used Carefully. Talk about what a hate crime is, that legal definition. Thank you for having me, Vicki. Um, from Jump, I do want to say, as you've been uh, mentioning and as Dr. Jung mentioned, a lot of the incidents we've been seeing throughout the pandemic has been a reflection of the heightened anti-Asian sentiment um, that Asian Americans have been attacked for. There's been this perpetuation of this racist link between Asian Americans and the virus. This is all happening at a time that we're starting to see a message shift here because you're starting to hear the Republicans, especially Trump call, calling it the Wuhan or the Chinese coronavirus. They're looking for someone to blame. Concern is growing this morning over an outbreak of a new SARS-like virus in China. At least six people have died from the Wuhan coronavirus, the Wuhan coronavirus, the Wuhan coronavirus. The 34-year-old ophthalmologist diagnosed Saturday with the Wuhan coronavirus. Coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. What more details about the similarities or differences between SARS and the Wuhan coronavirus? The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus in China. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus fears continue to grow over the outbreak of the Wuhan coronavirus. Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. The Wuhan coronavirus. We have new information about how the Wuhan coronavirus. Um, the piece specifically dealt with the attacks we've been seeing this year on our elders um, in Chinatowns. Uh, and, you know, it is important to make a distinction whether or not, um, you know, what these crimes are and exactly what they're being investigated for. Most of these attacks have not been found to be racially motivated or thus far there is no evidence that there has been. Most of these attacks have not been found to be racially motivated or thus far there is no evidence that there has been. A lot of these attacks are occurring in Chinatowns, which are often in low-income areas that have been hit particularly difficult or particularly hard by the virus. Um, and so, you know, there is there are different responses to um, economic deprivation, and then you know, opportunity could also factor into it. I mm -hmm. think that you know, experts really stress that it's important we don't you know self-diagnose or misdiagnose what the issue is. Um, in a lot of these cases, attackers are people of color. Um, they're from black and brown communities. In a lot of these cases, attackers are people of color. Um, they're from black and brown communities. Police make an arrest in a bloody subway attack that a witness says was racially motivated. 36-year-old Mark Matthew of the Bronx is charged with assault. See this morning another attack against an Asian American person. And asked her about a sign that she was holding. He then took it from her. He tried to kind of cram it into a garbage can, but then he ended up putting it on the ground, stomping on it. They say then the woman asked why he was doing this. Then they punched her twice, closed fist, hit her hard. Racism in the time of pandemic. A young woman wearing a mask is attacked in a subway station. Come here. Sanitize your Come here. An elderly woman is chased by a bully trying to squirt hand sanitizer on her. Harassment and assaults against Asian Americans are up sharply. Um, and so, you know, there is, there are different responses to um, economic deprivation. Racially motivated violence must be called out for exactly what it is. And we must stop making excuses or rebranding it as economic anxiety or sexual addiction. We know that the justice system isn't colorblind. Um, we also know that, you know, misdiagnosing something like this could inflame tensions between communities or, you know, kind of create this idea that one community is targeting another when that may not be the case. So know that, you know, misdiagnosing something like this could inflame tensions between communities or, you know, kind of create this idea that one community is targeting another when that may not be the case. Dr. John, I want to bring you in because that was a point that Kimmy made in the piece and I think some people commented that they felt like it gaslit the Asian American community, that they felt like it gaslit the Asian American community. I hope this helps to clarify why you felt it was necessary to talk about hateful acts or incidents that may not be actually rising to the level of a distinction of hate crime, but doesn't make them any less painful. You're not trying to discount that experience or say that it shouldn't be investigated. Dr. Jung, do you think that mislabeling actually does make it harder to keep the AAPI community safe? I think Kimmy's right that misdiagnosing the issue um, is a disservice. It is, um, the focus on hate crimes is maybe just a band-aid to this problem of racism that's widespread. 
um, over 90% of the incidents we received don't rise up to the level of crimes. Um, over 90% of the incidents we received don't rise up to the level of crimes. You know, context is incredibly important here, too. Context, context, context.